ایمان تمہیں I'm George Amini. I just finished my junior year here at Georgia Tech. I'm an aerospace engineering student, um, current co-president of GTXR. My name is Nick Gaug. I'm a third year aerospace engineering major and I'm the structures team lead for GTXR. My name is Cole Ejlumi. Uh, I just finished my second year at Georgia Tech uh, and I'm a propulsion member. I'm kind of the guy in charge of igniters right now. My name is Nick Mazio. I am a fifth year industrial engineering student and I do most of my work on the simulations team. Launch Weekend is like a, a major undertaking um, by like every metric you have. It's a major financial undertaking, it's a major logistical undertaking, it's a major technical undertaking. Obviously we need to get the rocket like built and ready to go for launch, but in addition to that we need to get all of our equipment transported cross country, we need to get all of our members uh, transported from wherever they are to California and then from where they land in LAX to actually the middle of nowhere in Mojave. So that's just very, very challenging and very, very expensive. Um, our team is really proud to bring out so many students to launch. We brought out over 50 people this year, which is very exciting to offer that opportunity to that many students. But it is, is really hard just to coordinate all the logistics and to make sure all of our equipment gets where it needs to be and gets there safely. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's up guys? <laughs> Welcome to the GTXR day one of rocket launch. Yeah. Cool transition. <laughs> We're going to In and Out Burger. We're going In and Out going Burger. In and we're going out oh, burger. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for like <laughs> five hours for this burger. Five hours? Do you not have food at all? I had a quick bar this morning. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why. Amazing. How do you feel, Michael? I feel amazing. Like they remind me of something that's like really unappetizing. Yeah. Packing peanut? Yeah! It's like biting into, they taste like styrofoam. And pimp speed on a mission for them greens. Lean, mean, money making machines, serving fiends. I've been in the game for 10 years making rap tunes. Ever since Honeys was wearing Sassoon, now it's 95. What happened? <laughs> Car is broken, broken. I have no idea what happened. We are in the middle of the desert. No water, no food. <laughs> Our engine has broken down and we're stuck in the middle of nowhere. We don't know what to do. Me and Tyler, my, my co van driver, we're just about to start playing Mario Kart, and suddenly he's like, you see this message? And I look at my phone, and it's, oh, uh, check engine light is on in the van, we're pulling over. <laughs> the mechanic. Yeah, it's fine. So I couldn't go to the van. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, not, not you. Uh, so who's down to walk? <laughs> Alright guys, guess where we are? The middle of nowhere on the side of the road because our car engine over here. So we're getting Dylan and Melvin to do some calls, hopefully get some repairs. Mojave. It was starting to get dark by the time that this happened and they were only halfway to Mojave from LA. By the time that we started going to them, it was sunset, and when we arrived to them, they were no longer at a gas station, but, you know, at another side road in the middle of the desert, uh, just, you know, pitch black, just chilling in their van. So, we'll wait for Nick, yep. the officer driving all the way to Mojave, safely, deal with Avion more. Yeah. Sound good? <laughs> we had three groups this year, uh, three different like teams essentially, that we rotated through the site. This way we could have um, people always on site working on the rocket and, and making sure things were like looking good and staying on track, but then also so that we could cycle people through to get sufficient amount of sleep, sufficient amount of rest, and sufficient amount of food. Um, it is a really like remote area and it's really challenging to get resources out to the site, and even when you're like not at the site, it's very challenging to just 
um, like get water and get food and that kind of thing. So we had three teams essentially cycle through to make sure we were always covered in our operations, but also so that everyone was staying safe and, and having all their needs met. It is currently 6.39 and I'm about to head out on the white group, which is the first unlucky people that get to wake up really early and go out to the desert so that we can unload the van for <laughs> launch. Welcome back guys. Today is day two of the Mojave rocket launch. We are currently heading down to farm on this dirt road and we have been hoping that our car does not fall apart right now. So wish us luck and we'll see you at farm. <laughs> We're in the desert guys. I was like literally in Augusta, Georgia yesterday. How's it going? Good. Yay! How? What have you guys been up to? Yeah, so we put the entire rocket together. Um, we got it on the rail, you see, and you now see we're just checking the electronics on it. Well, I was uh, I actually ran the the gold shift, which was the second shift to go out to Mojave. Uh, the purpose was to take um, finish any assembly that the um, the first team had done uh, for the full vehicle assembly, all of test. Um, and then put the rocket onto the rail, the launch rail, lifted vertical, uh, so that the avionics team could verify the functionality of the flight computer in a vertical state, um, and we could verify the, the fit of the rocket on the launch rail, and then take it back down and deintegrate it so that um, the final shift could do the, um, uh, the, the flight assembly, final assembly, with active uh, explosives and uh, yeah. Some blankets, we're gonna put some blankets on the rocket. These people right here are gonna finish up tightening down the stop on the bottom of the rail, and that's it. Currently, I am trying to debug some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to store the IME data onto the flash memory so that we can recover it after the flight. We have critical assembly sequence and then arm and launch. Put the rail vertical. Yeah, put the rail vertical, and then we're gonna have to take it back down, deintegrate everything. Yeah. Anything going through? I was picking up some stuff. I would say keep going with your tests and let's get this thing down as soon as we can. We are integrating the propulsion hardware, which is over there somewhere, and uh, integrating staging and mating the stages. So we arrive at FAR at 8 p.m. and we're leaving at about 2 or 3 in the morning. And then I get to sleep for an hour or two and then show up here and actually launch the yeah, so we were testing um, the igniter formulation. It was a formulation we'd come up with at school. It was a good formulation that we thought was going to work pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, when we got to the, the desert and we started testing it out, uh, it wasn't working the way we thought it was. Um, we're not really sure why it wasn't working that way, but it meant that we had to change our formulation because we couldn't fly that on launch day. So, but what are the backup igniters? Flying like that, yeah, original yeah. igniters. They're too big. They're too big and the tape gets in the way. So, yeah, so right now it's yeah, a 5 to 1 ratio. Is what we're doing right now. So oh, okay, of the spicy yeah. propellant and the BPM. Yeah. So we're going to move down. We're going to take it down to um, one, two, three. Uh, it was just popping, like the e match was just popping, but 
the igniter is supposed to burn, like the propellant is supposed to burn for like a longer time. One of the problems with igniters is that uh, when you're first, well, our igniters are there like a two-fold system. We have uh, a larger grain um, that actually ignites the motor, and we have a small amount of dust or you know, propellant powder that ignites that larger grain. Uh, and we were having trouble getting that, like, that dust to light uh, our igniter correctly. The trick is getting a good ratio of GT Gold, which is what we want to like kind of burn slowly and really ignite the rest of the rocket motor to BPM, which is going to help us ignite at altitude. We were spending kind of that night changing the ratio making sure the ratio wasn't too explosive. Launch morning in general uh, went pretty well, went pretty smoothly. Um, we always get out there really early. I think we were on site, the, the morning team was on site around 2 a.m. to do final integration, which is like final avionics checkouts, final assembly, uh, loading our energetics into the rocket, loading propellant into the rocket, um, arming, uh, arming happens a little bit later, but but all the final steps necessary for like checking out the rocket for flight. Uh, so we get there pretty early. We complete final assembly. We complete final integration. We make sure everything looks good. Um, we put the igniters in, and then we go and we, we roll out to the launch pad to arm the rocket and launch. Uh, four, four, four forty-five in the morning right now. We're um, pretty early. So yeah. So yeah. So we had some issues with the igniters, uh, where yeah. our okay. our mixture so, that had worked in Atlanta was okay. not igniting when we tested them in the desert, uh, and so we did a little bit of last minute kind of reformulation of our igniter uh, propellant formula, um, and we got a, a new mix that seems to be working really well, reliably, uh, and we're going to integrate that. And so we've got that for a new igniter, and we're also flying one of our heritage igniters that has worked for us in the past. Uh, to kind of de-risk the flight and make sure that we have two separate, uh, like dissimilar redundancy. I felt confident because I knew we had a good vehicle um, and we'd done everything we could to uh, get it ready and um, I felt excited because it's always exciting to see a year's worth of work uh, with some of your best friends pay off. Okay everyone, two hours on the dot. Does everyone understand? All right. physically like cannot thing, get like the, the wiring in both igniters oh, through I the see. throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the puck here. first, okay. and then we'll do a paper stick with the heritage igniter on it. Okay. Uh, hey, does anyone have a notebook? Okay, oh, Alfonso, we need paper and tape. You know what, you're gonna, you're gonna be stuffing the notes for next year's avionics system into the rocket. It was, it was definitely very stressful, you know, trying to fit an igniter in a live motor. Um, you know, everyone's kind of looking at you, Joey the President's looking at you. Um, it was very stressful. That was probably the most stressful time, I'd, I'd say. Okay, everyone! Three, two, one, up! Oh. start turning on the electronics. Um, we always try and turn on the electronics as late as possible to conserve battery life. We did see we did not have continuity on our staging system, which means that there was no um, electrical signal able to be transmitted to the charge that would that would activate our staging system. We didn't think that we would be able to fix it without um, pushing the schedule too far. What's next? This is your call. Is it worth trying to take the rocket down to try and mitigate that issue and put the rocket back up in better shape? Or is it is it better to just just launch the rocket as is? No matter like what happens if we're in a safe to fly configuration after we turn the shunt switches, then like we need to fly. Sorry, we we need a, we need similar to you. We we 
Thank you, Pat. The critical stuff is going to be checking sustainer and you. match continuity. If we have that, then it would be a go Good for launch. launch. Shunt switch release. Obviously, things can go on as planned. We had our, our nose cone charge deploy, um, like as we were leaving the rail or as we were on the rail, which essentially de deployed parachutes like under boost and lost our nose cone. So you can actually see in the video the nose cone like fly off um, and land to the side. And then the rocket continues to fly up at around four or five thousand feet. We see the sustainer lights and we successfully hot stage, which that was good. That was sort of as intended. Um, our staging event happened a little bit early, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. And then the two stages continued to fly under power for a few seconds, and at which point they, they eventually came back to ground. Everything came down ballistic because obviously the sustainer parachutes were damaged um, and removed from the vehicle when the nose cone deployed, and then the booster uh, recovery system was damaged during hot staging. Um, all of these failures can be tied back to essentially a single like software issue within the uh, commercial off-the-shelf flight computer. Um, that software issue, that software like like error essentially, uh, made it so that charges were deployed prematurely. And so all the, all the failures in the rocket can be tied back to that, that software issue. So um, all in all, like from an operations perspective and from like a vehicle construction and integration perspective, the launch was like generally pretty successful. Um, the launch obviously just had a single point of failure, which, you know, to a certain extent there's nothing you can do and that's just something you need to, you need to mitigate and, and take what you can from this launch and, and apply that to the next one. Thanks for coming out. You guys all, all made this possible. You guys all made the rocket possible. Um, phenomenal job regardless of what happened today. Um, we, we flew a rocket, you guys. Thank you for joining us on this entire trip. Loved having you here, but it's time to go home.